Joseph Edward Duncan III was an American convicted serial killer and child molester who was on death row in federal prison in conjunction with the 2005 kidnappings and murders of members of the Groom family of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. He was also serving 11 consecutive sentences of life without parole in conjunction with the same crimes as well as the 1997 murder of Anthony Martinez of Beaumont, California. Additionally, Duncan confessed to, but had not been charged with, the 1996 murder of two girls, Sammy Jo White and Carmen Cubias, in Seattle. At the time of the attack on the Groom family, Duncan was on the run from a child molestation charge in Minnesota. Born in Tacoma, Washington, Duncan had a criminal history dating to when he was 15 years old. In 1980, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for sexually assaulting a boy in Tacoma and as a result had spent all but eight years of his adult life in prison. He was paroled in 1994 but was returned to prison in 1997 for violating the terms of his parole. In May 2005, Kootenay County, Idaho, authorities discovered the bodies of Brenda Groom, her boyfriend, and her 13-year-old son in the family home near Coeur d'Alene. Authorities also noted that Groom's two other children were missing, Shasta, 8, and Dylan, 9. After an intense search for the two children, Shasta was found alive with Duncan at a restaurant in Coeur d'Alene nearly seven weeks later, and Duncan was arrested in conjunction with her kidnapping. When the authorities rescued Shasta, she told them that Duncan said that he was bringing her back to her father because Duncan had changed his mind about killing her. She said that Duncan stated that she taught him how to love. Dylan's remains were found days later in a remote area near St. Regis, Montana. Duncan was subsequently charged with murdering Dylan as well as the three victims at the Coeur d'Alene home. During his incarceration, authorities connected Duncan, with the unsolved murders of Anthony Martinez in California and two girls in Seattle, which all occurred during Duncan's parole from 1994 to 1997. Of those murders, Duncan was charged only in the California case. In all, Duncan was convicted in Idaho for kidnapping and murdering the three victims in Coeur d'Alene, for which he was given six life sentences, in federal court for kidnapping Shasta and Dylan Groon, and murdering Dylan, for which he was given three death sentences and three life sentences, and in the state of California for kidnapping and murdering Martinez, for which he was given two life sentences. In March 2021, it was reported that Duncan was suffering from a terminal brain tumor. Court filings revealed he underwent brain surgery in October 2020 after being diagnosed with glioblastoma, stage 4 brain cancer. He declined treatment from either chemotherapy or radiation therapy. In November 2020, medical staff at the Federal Bureau of Prisons estimated he had between 6 and 12 months left to live. He died on March 28, 2021, at the age of 58. Duncan had a long history as a violent sexual predator. He committed his first recorded crime in 1978 in his hometown of Tacoma. Washington, when he was 15 years old. In that incident, he RPD a nine-year-old boy at gunpoint. The following year, he was arrested for driving a stolen car. He was sentenced as a juvenile and sent to Dislin's Boys Ranch in Tacoma, where, according to a report by the Associated Press, he told a therapist who was assigned to his case that he had bound and sexually assaulted six boys. He also told the therapist that he estimated that he had RPD 13 younger boys by the time he was 16. In 1980, also in Tacoma, Duncan stole a number of guns from a neighbor and then abducted a 14-year-old boy and RPD him at gunpoint. Duncan was sentenced to 20 years in prison for this crime, but was released on parole in 1994 after serving 14 years. While out on parole, Duncan is known to have lived in several places in the Seattle area. He was arrested again in 1996, this time for marijuana use, and released on parole several weeks later with new restrictions. Authorities believe that during his parole Duncan murdered Sammy Joe White and Carmen Cubias in Seattle in 1996 and Anthony Martinez in Riverside County, California, in 1997, however, 
both those cases went cold and were not tied to Duncan until after his arrest in the Groon case. Duncan was arrested in Missouri and returned to prison in 1997, after violating the terms of his parole. He was released from prison on July 14, 2000 with time off for good behavior, and moved to Fargo, North Dakota. In March 2005, Duncan was charged with the July 3, 2004 molestation of two boys at a playground, in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. On April 5, 2005, he appeared before a Becker County judge, who set bail at 15,000 U.S. dollars. A Fargo businessman, with whom Duncan had become acquainted, helped him post bail. However, Duncan skipped bail and disappeared. On June 1, 2005, a federal warrant was issued for Duncan's arrest on the charge of unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. On May 16, 2005, authorities discovered the bodies of Brenda Groom, 40, her boyfriend, Mark McKenzie, 37, and her son, Slade Groom, 13, in their home along Lake Coeur d'Alene, outside the city of Coeur d'Alene. Two of Brenda Groom's other children, Dylan, 9, and Shasta, 8, were missing. An amber alert was issued and searchers combed the area for the missing children while authorities investigated the deaths at the home as homicides. Autopsies determined the cause of death to be blunt trauma to the head. Authorities also noted that the victims had been bound. Seven weeks later, in the early morning hours of July 2, 2005, Shasta Groom was seen at a Denny's restaurant in Coeur d'Alene in the company of an unknown man. A waitress, manager, and two customers at the restaurant recognized Shasta from media reports. They surreptitiously called police and positioned themselves to prevent the man from leaving. Police officers arrived at the restaurant and arrested the man, later identified as Duncan, without incident. Shasta Groon identified herself to a waitress at the restaurant and to authorities, and was taken to Kootenay Medical Center for medical treatment and to be reunited with her father. Kurt Elaine Police, meanwhile, detained Duncan on kidnapping charges and on his outstanding federal warrant. When Shasta Groon was found without Dylan, authorities held little hope of finding the boy alive. Police asked the public for tips, specifically with respect to sightings of the stolen red Jeep Cherokee, with Missouri license plates that Duncan was driving at the time of his arrest. Authorities discovered that Duncan had rented the car in Minnesota and never returned it. A gas station employee in Kellogg, about 40 miles east of Coeur d'Alene, recognized the vehicle as one that had stopped at her station hours before Duncan was arrested. The employee suspected the girl wandering around the station might have been Shasta, but did not confront her as nothing appeared out of the ordinary. The employee and her manager notified authorities after reviewing surveillance camera footage and identifying Duncan and Shasta in the video. On July 4, 2005, Investigators found human remains at a remote makeshift campsite in the Lolo National Forest near St. Regis, Montana. The remains were sent to the FBI lab in Quantico, Virginia for DNA testing and were positively identified as those of Dylan Groom. During the trial it emerged that Duncan shot Dylan Groom at point-blank range by holding a sword of 12-gauge shotgun to his head. Much of what is known about the murders of the Groon family was revealed by Shasta Groon herself. According to Shasta Groon's police interview, Duncan killed her mother, older brother, and her mother's fiancé, and then kidnapped her and her brother, driving away with them in his red Jeep Cherokee. Shasta told investigators her mother called her into the living room, where she saw Duncan wearing black gloves and holding a gun. Her captor tied her mother's hands with nylon zip ties, and did the same to her mother's fiancé and her brother Slade. Shasta and Dylan were removed from the house and placed inside the stolen rental car. While she waited with her brother, she heard her mother's fiancé scream out, and then saw her injured older brother staggering away from the entrance to the home. Duncan then bludgeoned the three to death, neither Shasta nor Dylan witnessed the murders. Both Shasta and Dylan were taken to other locations, where they were repeatedly molested and tortured for six weeks. She said that they drove a long distance and stayed in two different campsites, where Duncan told her of having beaten her family members to death with a hammer. 
Shasta also told investigators how Dylan was murdered. Duncan insisted that Dylan's death was an accident. Initially, Shasta was standing on the other side of Duncan's jeep when she heard a loud boom. She then ran to the other side of the jeep where she saw Dylan lying on the ground screaming. Duncan was apparently digging through a clear plastic box looking for beer, when a shotgun, that was also kept in the box went off, hitting Dylan in the stomach. Shasta said that she then saw Duncan put the shotgun to Dylan's head, and pull the trigger, but it failed to go off. While Dylan begged Duncan not to kill him, Duncan reloaded the shotgun, put it back to the boy's head and pulled the trigger, Dylan was killed instantly. According to Shasta, immediately after killing Dylan, Duncan started crying and told her that he only killed him to put him out of his misery. A public memorial service was held for Dylan on July 16, 2005, which would have been his 10th birthday, at Real Life Ministries. Shasta also reported that Duncan nearly killed her days after killing Dylan. She said he gave her the choice to be killed either by strangulation or with a gun. Shasta chose the former, and Duncan proceeded to wrap a rope around her neck and pull it tight. However, Shasta begged Duncan to stop, using his nickname, Jet, and he immediately did. He then asked her if she would like to meet his mother, to which she responded yes, and the two drove back towards Kirtalane and stopped at the Denny's restaurant where Shasta was rescued. Duncan's arrest led the FBI to launch a nationwide review of unsolved missing child cases. He was implicated as a possible suspect in several crimes that occurred between 1994 and 1997, when he was on parole, and between 2000 and 2005, when he was free from prison. Although he was cleared as a suspect in some cases, authorities in California and Washington had enough evidence to believe Duncan had committed unsolved murders in their jurisdictions. On April 4, 1997, 10-year-old Anthony Michael Martinez was playing with friends in the front yard of his home in Beaumont, California, when an unknown man approached the group asking for help finding a missing cat. When the boys refused, the man grabbed Martinez at knife point and threw him into his vehicle. After a two-week search, Martinez's body was found nude and partially decomposed in Indio, California, on April 19, 1997. Investigators noted that he had been sexually assaulted and bound with duct tape. Although a composite sketch of the suspect was made available and a partial fingerprint taken from the duct tape found on Martinez's body, the case eventually went cold. In July 2005, bloggers noticed similarities between Duncan and the composite sketch in the Martinez case, as well as between Duncan's vehicle and the one Martinez's assailant was driving. The FBI and National Center for Missing and Exploited Children became involved and in turn contacted Riverside County authorities. Riverside authorities were able to match the fingerprint taken from Martinez's body to Duncan, and on August 3 the Riverside County Sheriff officially announced Duncan's connection with the Martinez case. FBI agents reported that Duncan confessed to the murder in an interview on July 19, 2005, describing the crime as revenge against society again, for sending him back to jail for a probation violation. After her rescue, Shasta Groon told investigators Duncan had told her about other crimes he had committed, including the Martinez murder, and the 1996 murder of Sammy Jo White, 11, and her half-sister, Carmen Cubias, 9, who vanished on July 6, 1996, after leaving the Crest Motel in Seattle. Their skeletal remains were found on February 10, 1998, in Bothell, Washington. Duncan confessed to beating the two young girls to death. Duncan had been convicted in three courts, in Idaho District Court, for the kidnapping and murders of Brenda and Slade Groom and Mark McKenzie, the United States District Court for the District of Idaho, for the kidnapping of Shasta and Dylan Groom, the murder of Dylan Groom, and other crimes, and a California Superior Court, for the kidnapping and murder of Anthony Martinez. Duncan first appeared in a Kootenay County Court on July 13, 2005, where he was charged with three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of first-degree kidnapping, all in conjunction with the deaths of Brenda and Slade Groon and Mark McKenzie, 
that Kootenay County prosecutors had initially planned to charge Duncan with the kidnappings of Shasta and Dylan Groom. However, they deferred those charges to the federal courts as transporting children across state lines for the purpose of sexual exploitation is a federal offense. Trial was set to begin on January 17, 2006, but was delayed until April 4, after the district judge granted a request to the defense for more time to prepare for the trial, and then again to October 26, after the judge in the case stated that no one wants to try this case twice, including me. Duncan's attorneys blamed the multiple postponements on the prosecution's insistence on pursuing the death penalty. On October 16, 2006, shortly after jury selection began, Kootenay County prosecutors and Duncan's attorney reached a plea bargain, in which Duncan pleaded guilty to all state charges against him. He was immediately sentenced to three consecutive life sentences, without the possibility of parole for the three kidnapping charges. Sentencing on the three murder charges was continued pending the outcome of his federal trial on kidnapping and murder charges. The judge said that if he did not receive the death penalty on the federal charges, he would return to Kootenay County for a death penalty phase on the state murder charges. Over two years later, after being sentenced to death on federal charges, Kootenay County sentenced Duncan to three additional life sentences. Duncan also agreed to cooperate with Kootenay County Sheriff's detectives investigating his crimes and provide passwords to encrypted files stored on his computer. On January 18, 2007, Duncan was indicted by a federal grand jury in Coeur d'Alene on 10 counts of kidnapping, kidnapping resulting in death, aggravated sexual abuse of a minor, and sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death, and other crimes related to illegal firearm possession and vehicle theft. He was arraigned the following day at a federal court in Boise, Idaho, where a judge ordered Duncan to stand trial the following March. Duncan's defense attorneys immediately requested a postponement, which was granted the week the trial was originally scheduled to begin. A new trial date was set for January 22, 2008. On December 3, 2007, Duncan pleaded guilty to all 10 charges against him. As a condition of the agreement, Shasta Groom would not have to testify in the penalty phase of the trial. Due to a gag order, other details of the plea agreement were not released. Jury selection for the penalty phase for Duncan's federal trial began on April 14, 2008. During jury selection, Duncan dismissed his attorneys and chose to represent himself. His attorneys objected, asserting he was not competent to do so and requested a formal hearing as to the issue. The district court ordered an evaluation of Duncan to determine his competence, and accepted the evaluator's conclusion that he was competent to proceed without counsel. On August 27, 2008, after three hours of deliberation, the jury recommended the death penalty, and the judge imposed three death sentences for kidnapping resulting in death, sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death, and use of a firearm in a violent crime resulting in death, all related to the death of Dylan Groon. On November 3, 2008, Duncan was sentenced to an additional three consecutive terms of life without parole in federal prison for kidnapping Shasta Groon and for sexually abusing Shasta and Dylan. On March 15, 2011, Duncan pleaded guilty to Martinez's murder and was sentenced to two life terms on April 5, 2011. As part of a plea deal, the sentence came without the possibility of parole or right to appeal. Although Duncan could have faced a separate death sentence in addition to the ones he had already been sentenced to in federal court, Riverside County District Attorney Paul Zellerbach justified the life sentence by stating that he had consulted with the Martinez family who wanted closure in the case and that the federal system will kill him long before the state of California would have seriously considered it. The jurors who imposed the death penalty on Duncan were offered counseling in order for them to cope with the horrific evidence they had to see during the trial. Part of the evidence viewed in court was a 33-minute video depicting a new Duncan torturing, physically and verbally assaulting, and sexually abusing a nude and restrained boy identified as Dylan Groom. 
The video showed this abuse conducted in various interior areas of what appeared to be a dilapidated, single-level wooden shed or small cabin. Other evidence included human remains, a wire noose, and other videos of Duncan's continued torture of Dylan. During one of the videos, a child could be heard screaming in pain while a naked Duncan shouted, The devil is here, boy, the devil himself, the devil likes to watch children suffer and cry. In 2016, Shasta Groon started a petition called Slade and Dylan's Law in honor of her two brothers whom Duncan murdered. In the petition description, she stated that convicted sex offenders should not be let out of jail. This would effectively mean that the three-strike rule for violent sex offenders be reduced to one strike. By the time the petition closed, it had 51,820 supporters. In October 2020, Duncan underwent brain surgery after he was diagnosed with glioblastoma. He declined any treatment and rejected chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Medical staff at the Federal Bureau of Prisons estimated he had between 6 and 12 months left to live. He died on March 28, 2021, at the age of 58.